This episode of the Buckeye Sloopcast brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasonings will take your barbecue from good to great. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Uh, they are all over Northwest Ohio uh, with their with their uh, food truck. Although it's a bus, he calls it a food truck. He's also from Ohio and he calls himself a Canadian. Listen, he has issues. But the fact of the matter is, is that the barbecue is great. Uh, make sure to check out all of his social medias for where he will be next. Like I said, traveling all over the great state of Ohio. Again, mainly in the Northwest. But like I said, keep, uh, keep an eye on those uh, social medias where he will be announcing his next dates. And I'm going to come back with a menu and some user reviews in our next ad breaks, ad break. So go ahead and stick around for that. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. Um, that's right. They're veteran owned. They are Marine owned. They are Ohio based. They're based out of Toledo, uh, Perrysburg, more specifically, all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA or organic. And again, all of their coffee is fresh roast to order, which means it's not sitting on a shelf and sitting in a truck and sitting on a warehouse and, and sitting on who knows where for who knows how long. And this is especially valuable if you're not ho home grinding your beans, because, from the moment the bean is ground to the moment you brew it, it's losing oils, it's losing flavor, it's doing all of that. But even if you are fresh grounding your beans, which you can buy either from the Iron Bean Coffee Company, still getting that freshest roast possible is tantamount to getting the freshest, most flavorful coffee possible. Uh, you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, so Mark, this is the part where we just say hi to the people who watch YouTube because they get to see this, but the audio people don't. So this is the exclusive part. Everyone, look, it's not Kyle. <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate for everybody. Oh, you know, uh, it probably depends upon who you ask. The podcast people like us, uh, the YouTube people. Eh. <laughs> or maybe that's just because. I can't see the podcast comments. <laughs> no, the audio people don't even know it's Mark yet, Austin. That is correct. <laughs> the the video people, unfortunately, do. Yeah. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, K K K Mark? Mark, hey everyone, it's Mark Givler subbing in for Kyle, who's doing that uh, that real life job thing because not enough of you are patrons. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Mark's filling in today. Um, what 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 did I do to deserve this honor, Mark? <laughs> uh, you picked the right time of the week. I guess I don't think anyone else was available. I think I was the only, I think I was the last guy standing. You went down the list, and well, Tony and Tom and Kevin were unavailable, and uh, I don't think Alex. I think Alex is traveling for for his job and so you're stuck with me you know i no offense but my first call is always to tony uh he and i just sort of go back to the ozone time and and everything else so there's just a, a level of comfort and that and i think he's too nice to say no to me so uh you know my, my first call whenever kyle's out is to, is to tony but uh you know i had alex on over over the summer i made him sit through a, a mock uh, I almost said draft class, a mock recruiting class, and had him tell me how wrong I was. Uh, but that, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, to, you know, we're in season now. We're doing that thing, and we're going to preview the Ohio State Penn State game. That's right. This is an episode of Know Your Enemy, the title that, when abbreviated, almost says Kyle. That's that's <laughs> how that works. All right, uh, Mark. It is time to get to know our enemy. This week is the Penn State Nittany Lions. Spoiler alerts. Yeah, I don't know if you guys knew this. We're playing Penn State this week. Um, Penn State almost feels like the opposite team of Ohio State right now, whereas Penn State looked like a beast early in the season, um, has has fallen off a little bit. Ohio State, on the other hand, 
has, you know, offensively was putting up points, but not quite looking like Ohio State. And defensively, it was, uh, it looked like we were in for a repeat of 2020. The defense has started to figure things out uh, for many reasons, uh, maybe too big to get into <laughs> for this sentence. Um, and when it comes to the offense, it, Ultimately, you had a, a redshirt freshman quarterback who had to settle into the job, and he is starting to do that. And he's he's getting better every week, which is scary for everyone except Ohio State. So in the scope of the season, it's almost weird that we're now looking at this game with not I, I think if you asked a bunch of Ohio State fans after after Oregon, if we were going to beat Penn State. How many of them, what percentage do you think would have said yes? <laughs> I wonder. How soon How soon after Oregon? Like 10 minutes after Oregon or like a couple of days after Oregon? 10 minutes after Oregon, I think probably about 5% right. would have would have picked Ohio State to beat Penn State. But no um, one, I think probably. Yeah, no, no one hates Ohio <laughs> State more than Ohio State fans during and in the immediate <laughs> aftermath of a game. Yeah. Um, you know, even, even after a few days to kind of stew on it, I think it probably would have been maybe a 50, 50 proposition. I think a lot of people thought, I I'm sure we could dig up some posts on the message board calling this a three or four loss Ohio state team after that Oregon game. 100%. And by the way, were they wrong based off of the information they had? Um, the, the, the defense is what the defense was. And, you know, I, I honestly, I even think people would have said that after Tulsa. Uh, now, of course, we go back and look through the Penn State schedule. They defeated Wisconsin, which at the time felt like a real important win. Uh, maybe we now know that maybe that that wasn't quite what it was. They beat Auburn, and Auburn's a a good team. They're they're not they're not the best Auburn we've seen in recent years, but still, they they beat a really. It's a good Auburn team. They're they're ranked, I believe, uh, again. They fell out of the rankings, but I believe they're back in. Um, they shut out Iowa, or excuse me, they shut out Indiana. And they look like a team that's preparing for a run at Ohio State. But then I, I then I think the crux, the 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 real turning point of the situation happened, which is Sean Clifford getting hurt. Uh, I've I've been running the theory that that was the turning point of the of the season. Thoughts? Oh, no question. I mean, that Iowa game goes down the tubes uh, when they put in Roberson, and um, I think uh, I think we all or many of us watched last week. Uh, unfortunately, that was one of the maybe the worst football games I've ever ever watched, uh, start to finish. But um, you know, it, it's been tough sledding for them on offense with Clifford. He looks hesitant. He looks like a guy who's playing with some bad ribs, to be honest. Um, he just, you know, doesn't look like he's his normal self. And, um, they just look very limited offensively. They don't have a difference maker at running back. Uh, I don't think the offensive line's particularly good. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty much, you know, hope Jahan Dotson makes a big play. That's, that's their offense right now. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm just I'm getting a lot of hate in the chat for uh, suggesting that Auburn isn't bad. <laughs> you know, they're kind of like they're kind of like the other teams. You know, we we look we lined up that schedule for Penn State at the beginning of the year, like oh, those are some really good teams. And then we watched them, like, well, there's maybe some good defenses. I mean, Iowa's not a good offense. Auburn's not a good offense, and and Wisconsin's a, a terrible offense. So yeah. You know, they've, they haven't faced a team that's competent on both sides of the ball yet. I, I would say. I, I agree with that. Although I don't know how many teams in college football this year are competent on both sides of the ball. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I really don't think there's a, an elite team that has revealed itself yet this year. Um, Cause even Georgia, I feel like is. Uh, substandard on offense. Uh, there, there's no denying how good their defense, especially their line is, but even Georgia, I feel like is substandard on offense. Um, the yeah, I'm, I'm being reminded that Auburn almost lost to Georgia Southern. Uh, <laughs> should have, you don't allowed to say anything nice about any sec team. 100% should have server. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's the thing. And I will stand by this 
uh, probably until I die because I'm I'm that type of person. But the I, I think Penn State outplayed Iowa. Um, you see, you go back and you look at this game. Penn State struggled with turnovers. Um, time of possession, Iowa beat them on. First downs were even. Yardage was relatively even. But if Clifford doesn't get hurt, I fully believe they win that game because their defense, or excuse me, their offense, Penn State's offense became completely one dimensional when Roberson came in. Whether he was not prepared properly, whether he is not up to the Penn State standard, whether, I, I don't know, but they did not seem to trust him to throw the ball more than five or 10 yards down the field, which, we are going to take out Iowa. What do you have to do? You have to get your athletes in space, but you can't get your athletes in space if you can't throw the ball further than five yards past the line of scrimmage. Um, Roberson came in on that game and threw for 33% completion percentage, 34 yards, uh, an average of 1.6 yards and two interceptions. So that, that then takes us into the next game against Illinois where my goodness, it's Illinois. <laughs> what, what else do you have to say about that? I, yeah, that, that, that was, uh, that was painful to watch. And I, just, I kept, you know, as they went through the 8,000 overtimes, I kept saying, surely Penn state's superior athletes will be able to allow them right. to get a two point conversion here. And it just, <laughs> It, they couldn't consistently do that. It, it's shocking. And, you know, they kept, it was funny. I, I almost think Illinois almost botched that though, because they had ran for what, like 300 plus yards, maybe almost 400, I think in regulation. And I think most like, I would say like five of their first six, two point conversions were pass plays. I'm like, you've been running for, for, 20, 30 yards of pop almost all game. And you get down and get the ball to three yard line and you don't run the ball. And then, but their defense, you know, kept Penn state out of the end zone so many times that they were able to, to pull off the upset. But um, that was alarming for me that Penn state couldn't just line up uh, with, with their athletes, with all their four-star kids that they recruited and, and, and get a couple yards. I mean, that was, that was shocking. Yeah. Well, what I find, so we had a Penn state defense that had looked really good all year. and all of a sudden they allow Illinois to put up 357 on them on the ground alone. Now that they only threw for 38, <laughs> but they did, they rushed for 357 yards against Penn state. Now it, it should be noted before I get any angry Penn state fans down in the comments. Yeah. They, they ran the ball 67 times, but still this is 5.3 a carry and no offense to to Brown or uh, Illinois' other running back, whose name I can't remember. Neither of them are Henderson or Chop. Like, that's no offense. And, and their offensive line isn't Ohio State's offensive line. No. Or, yes, Austin or Pryor. Everyone has one of their, everyone has their favorites, right? Um, so, I, I don't know. Like, is that, Illinois also did that by throwing a ton of meat on 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 the line. You know what I mean? They they weren't running that out of a out of an eleven personnel group, so I don't know. Is that replicatable if you're Ohio State? Or are you? Could you do you, do you see three hundred and fifty seven yards of rushing against Penn State and see? Yeah, we can do that. No, I don't. I don't think Ryan Day is gonna ground and pound like that. I think. Um... Uh, you know, Penn State's got a good secondary, but I don't think there's a secondary in the country that can stop these receivers. So I think it'll be more of a, a certainly a balanced attack. But but it's intriguing because again, Illinois poses little to no threat of throwing the football, and you were still able to kind of you. I mean, five and a half yards a carry about when when you have no threat to throw the football. So you, yeah. you wonder if they can't if they can't replicate maybe six seven yards a carry. Um, given the threat they're going to have on the outside there. So that's that's the interesting part for me is if Penn State's going to have some issues stopping the run, they're going to have a lot of issues because Ohio State will make you pay in so many ways that Illinois couldn't make them pay. Um, and I think that's probably why Illinois, you know, didn't have a lot of points in that game was because I think as, as the field shrunk, they were unable right. to, to, con to continue that. But 
Um, it just, it doesn't bode well for Penn State. That was the one thing I think Penn State was maybe hanging their hat on in this game was, well, you know, we can maybe limit Trevion Henderson and make them, you know, throw it 50 times. And, and now we're even questioning that. Well, and I think we've saw a couple teams in the past couple of weeks attempt to maybe replicate what we saw, maybe, you know, Tulsa or, or Oregon say, which was essentially like, well, make the freshman beat us. And when Stroud was still getting his feet wet, that was working. It's not working anymore. You, you can't say, well, let's, let's make Stroud beat us and see what happens. Cause I didn't work out for Indiana. <laughs> it, it's, I don't think it's going to work out for anybody. Uh, I honestly don't know how you stop Ohio state's offense at this point. Um, a Gatling gun. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know either. I I've written this a couple weeks in a row. I think I, I, I sit here and I try and think about this to myself of like, okay, if I'm an opposing defense, what do I take away? What do I do? And every time I think, you know, Oh, well, you know, I, I think Indiana tried to take away a lot. Like for example, I think Indiana tried to take away Olave. Well, you know, I know he had the touch, the short touchdown catch or whatever, but you know, you go back and you look and uh, Olave had 24 yards receiving and they were up 37 points at halftime or whatever. I was 30. I think it was 44, seven and a half or something, whatever it was. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you took, you took, you know, you took option a in the passing game out completely, pretty much completely out of the game and you're down five touchdowns. I mean, I don't, I don't know what you do at that point. Uh, and now the running back room, I know, the, I know Crowley's out now, but but with, with mine Williams back, the running back room um, has a little bit more of a thunder and lightning uh, type of feel to it. And um, so I think it's going to get even more difficult to defend. Yeah. Uh, I, one of the better suggestions I got in the chat for how do you stop the Ohio state offense is have Ed Reed and Sean Taylor as safeties. I, I mean, I personally, I, I would reach out for corners before the safeties, uh, but okay. Uh, talent is talent, I suppose. The uh, I would say like the one way you stop Ohio State's offense at this point is just having like an elite defensive line that can disrupt everything, um, which is like the the one team I look at who gives me concern defensively is Georgia because their defensive line is so good. Um, but back 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 to Penn State, uh, when you see a big upset, which is what Illinois beating Penn State was, right? It was a really, really, I, I, I don't remember what the line was on the game, but I think it was pretty sizable. Uh, I don't think I have that number here. But uh, regardless, a lot of times when you see a team, when you see a big upset like this, you see the underdog typically have like a really nice turnover differential because like turnovers are the great equalizer, right? No, uh, not at all. Illinois turned the ball over three times. Penn State didn't. Uh, Sean Clifford. That's the shocking stat of that game. Holy cow. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how, how well this translates to college football, but I know the NFL number is if you are, if you're minus three in the turnovers, you lose 75% of the time or something like that. Again, I have no idea how that translates to college necessarily, but um, Sean Clifford was not Sean Clifford in this game. He played. I was shocked. He played. I was not expecting him to play. He played, but did he, I mean, how much of him did? Yeah. Well, I, I, I've been watching Sean since, he was at St. X coming out of high school. Um, and he is, uh, an incredibly tough kid. Um, and he, he just, he looked hesitant. He looked, it wasn't just that he physically couldn't do certain things. He, it looked like every hit was extremely painful and that by, you know, the middle of that game, he was, you know, getting a little hesitant in there. Uh, they were still asking him to, to do some things with his legs. That wasn't really working. Um, and it just, ass. uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just um, it, it was honestly for someone who, who likes Sean as a person, I got to, you know, I covered him and covered his, his uh, younger brother for 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 a minute. But uh, someone who likes Sean as a person and respects his game and his toughness, that was kind of hard to watch. Yeah, no, I mean, no disrespect to Clifford whatsoever in, in that respect. I mean, he went out there and he did everything he could. Uh, I think there is a situation in which the coaches should have been the adults in the room and not let him out there, but maybe that's just 
and maybe that's just the indicator of how much faith they don't have in Roberson. You know, it's well, you put Clifford out yeah, there I mean, who I'm, was at best 50 percent of himself. At best 50 yeah, percent of himself. Uh, imagine being Penn State with all the talent you've recruited and you're facing Illinois, who's, you know, we can go around on who the worst team in the Big Ten is. They're they're near the bottom. Um and not having enough confidence in all the talent you've recruited to just be able to line up with your backup quarterback and beat Illinois at home. Right. I, that, that's the other shocking thing is that they did it against Illinois. Like in my mind, they, they really just must have no faith in Roberson because it, it, it was I mean, or the rest of the offense, just the, yeah. just the, the weapon, the lack of just the total, the offensive line, the lack of, of, of weapons uh, yeah. outside of Dotson. I mean, uh, I got uh, from Buckeye Zach. He says Burke will expose Dotson. I, I mean, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know if that's fair to Dotson because I, <laughs> I, I just don't know who's gonna get Dotson the ball. Like I, I feel like Dotson's playing with an extreme. You know, it's kind of like uh, feeling bad for Ross Dot and Clemson. Like everyone's like, oh, his his draft stock is dying and it's just like i mean the scouts know what's happening at clemson and that it's not the they they don't just look at stat lines guys um we are uh bumping up against our first ad read um before we do that uh a lot of watching our chat here there's a lot of la talk uh we we had (laughs) i I was floored when not once, but twice James Franklin said he was focused on playing Illinois this week during his press conference. I don't want to talk about rumors. I'm focused on Illinois. And he said it twice. He said the big house thing, but maybe that's a slip of the tongue. If he had said Illinois once, maybe that's a slip of the tongue, but he said it twice. I don't know. Um, Do you have any thoughts, any, anything on, the future of, of Franklin at Penn state. And is that all, you know, in addition to Clifford, is that maybe why we're seeing Penn state slide so badly right now? Yeah, I think there is something to the the Franklin stuff right now. And now that, you know, there's, there's a couple high profile jobs open now, um, you know, that opened up pretty early. So um, I don't think, you know, I know Bill green on our site was, was making one point about, you know, how in the past Franklin's been linked to some jobs and he's generally come out of it with, you know, a a better contract, more money for his assistance, facilities, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think he's got that leverage anymore. So I I don't, if these rumors continue to swirl, if he doesn't come out immediately and uh, start squashing this and he, and he really hasn't, then I got to think there's something to it because again, what's his record since the beginning of last year, was he like seven and eight or something? Like, I mean, what is his actual record? The last like 15, 20 games, it's like 500. Yeah. I don't think he's in a position anymore to be stringing people along for, for raises and for more money. No, he, he he's absolutely not. And I, I think I quite frankly think there's been a general lack of support for him at Penn state since he got there, but uh, that's, that's a different topic for a different show. Uh, I'm going to do some quick ad reads uh, and then we can get into some game predictions. All right, guys, first and foremost, this episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast order, veteran-owned, marine-owned. We we did that. We talked about all that stuff already. Um, holidays, believe it or not, holidays are already coming upon us. So uh, if you have a coffee lover in your life, maybe think about picking up some Iron Bean Coffee. Know that you're supporting a company that is based on integrity, that treats both their customers and the people who they buy their beans from. Because like I said, all of their beans are fair trade certified. They work directly with farms um, off in places like Colombia and Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. Like you're supporting a company based on integrity and you can you can buy the coffee lover in your, if you don't know, like me, Hey, you have someone, they're a real coffee snob, but you don't necessarily know all that much about it yourself. You have a few options. One, you can just get them a gift card. There are Iron Bean gift cards available. Two, 
There's the sampler pack, which is called the whole shebang, which comes with, I don't have the website up. I believe it's 13 different flavors of coffee in the sample size bag. They get a huge selection of coffees. They get a little bit of variety. And if they find that one coffee that they really like, then you, you've set them up with what might be their new favorite coffee. And that's what do you, what do you, what do you want, want me to say? That's the gift that keeps on giving right there. Um, and like, and if they do find that one coffee that they like, then they can save money doing a subscribe and save service. They get a bag of coffee at a discount with the subscribe and save, uh, sent to their, sent to their house every month. So, uh, you can, uh, find your new favorite coffee or, or maybe the loved one in your life's new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com as Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloop Guys also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company. Uh, we, we did all that stuff already, too. Let's take a look at some reviews. Why not? Um, let's see. Gonna, um, Mike uh, says, great barbecue, support local. I couldn't agree more, Mike. Um, let's see. Donna. Donna says the sandwich with the barbecue sauce was the best she has ever had. He sa she says the brisket was hot and juicy. Barbecue sauce was sweet, but not too sweet. I, I hate I hate when the barbecue sauce gets too sweet. I'm, I'm with Donna on this. And the uh, and the portion was like no other. Incredibly generous. Uh, she says it was amazing. She says her husband bought the ribs and loved them. Uh, let's see. Let, let's take a quick look at the menu. Uh, the ribs. She mentions the ribs. I'm going to bring up the ribs. You can buy your ribs by the bone. Uh, you can buy a full rack. You can buy a half rack. Uh, and these aren't your normal barbecue ribs. These are maple ribs. What else would you expect from Canadian? Am I right? So you get some maple ribs. Uh, sweet, but not too sweet. Uh, your choice of sides include baked beans, uh, green beans, a kick and coleslaw, and the official Mad Canadian potato salad. Uh, they have brisket they have pork and if you're worried and i know you are yes because i hate making choices too they have a sampler so you can uh go ahead and visit the mad canadian social sites on instagram on facebook on twitter uh and make sure to keep an eye on uh where they are going next so you can pick up some mad canadian barbecue uh for yourself so uh, once again, that is the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary Blue Devils. Kyle, you can you can listen to the recording, but you can't do the recording. Kyle's in the chat now. Hmm. What are you doing, Kyle? Shame. Shame on you. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is uh, this is the part where we. Uh, hey, Kyle. Oh, oh, cause you're eating. Okay. Okay, uh, this is the part where we uh, make some predictions. Um, who do you think would be Ohio State's key player in this game if you had to pick one guy? Uh, if you want to pick a position group, don't worry. We have a, a category for that a little bit later. But if we're picking one key Ohio State player to watch, uh, who, who, do you, who are you going to go with on this particular game? Um, I, I'm going to go CJ Stroud. You know, the the last time he he faced a, a big time uh, team, uh, it didn't go well. I think he was obviously he was still very green, but he was obviously not healthy, uh, as we found cool. out. You know, the, the coming or the following weeks. But um, if he takes care of the football, if he doesn't get wild, if he can just puts it where it needs to be, takes care of it. I don't know how this Ohio State offense is held in check, and I don't know where the offense is going to come from from Penn State to win a shootout. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think that Ohio State, I think the offense does fine, but if Penn State's defense does better than I'm expecting them to do, and if Penn State's defense really shows out, um, I feel like even they can only last so long. Because, and talk about a reversal of our mindset from post-Oregon, I think the defense keeps Penn State so stifled and keeps themselves, the Ohio State defense keeps themselves off of the field so much that I think the Penn State defense wears down eventually. Um, 
So with, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go with the offense because I feel so good about the defense that um, I don't necessarily have one guy to pick. So we talked about we talked about everything that Illinois was able to achieve on the ground last week. Um, going to go ahead and throw Henderson out there. Um, this might be a game in which they actually need him to run the ball more than nine times <laughs> like he did last week. Maybe he, he starts to get a you know, a, a larger portion of the carries. Maybe it's required this game. So I'm going to go Henderson. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's where my focus is. Ohio state player of the game. Um, Penn state player to watch. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and go first on this one. I'm going to go. I am going to steal the easy answer though. I'm sorry. Um, it, it's Sean Clifford. Uh, because we had Franklin come out and say this week, well, Clifford's uh, Clifford's a hundred percent. He expects him to be a hundred percent. I expect a $5,000 check in my bank tomorrow. It's not happening. Like, I, I don't know how he could go from the condition he was in the Illinois game. Experience the Illinois game. And all of the shots he takes in that game. And then he is somehow good. Not even a hundred percent. If he's even good uh this this weekend against Ohio State. And we haven't even brought up the fact that with detail anyway that they went into nine overtimes last week and the extra fatigue that that cost a team. How devastating it is for a team to put in what is essentially an extra quarter of football. Yeah, I think um I I mean I'm going to stick with the Penn State offense, but I think it's Jahan Dotson because yeah. If he doesn't make two or three big plays in this game, I don't know how Penn State's getting anywhere close to 20 points. And you're not going to beat Ohio State 20 to 18 or whatever the hell the score was last week with Illinois. That's that's not going to happen. You're going to have to historically, you're going to have to get to 35 to you know. It, but even even now, I you, you might argue would that be enough? It was barely enough for Oregon when Ohio State was kind of a mess. You know, do they got to get to 40 and how are they going to, my God, how are they going to get to 40? So uh, yeah, Jahan Dotson has got to, you know, go, he's got to do something crazy. He's got to do something absolutely uh, off the charts because I mean, he had a unbelievable game last year and it wasn't enough. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the only guy who's putting points on the board right now for them. Yeah. And you know, say what you want to say about Ohio state's defense. Um, and it's getting better. It's getting much, much better, but I think even they can sort of lock down a single player, which is kind of what Penn state is on offense right now. All right. Key matchup. Uh, you know, I think the key matchup here, once again, if we're going to maybe focus a bit on Penn state's offense, if we're like, maybe if Ohio state's really gunning for a shootout or at least a blowout in this game, you have to look at the Ohio State secondary, which has been in many ways maligned. Um, you know, they've had a really bad couple of years. 2020 was bad, and the beginning part of this year was bad, and rumors about people losing jobs and whatnot and having to play true freshmen and everything else. Um, but they're starting to find they're starting to find their footing. They have found their footing uh, in many ways. So to me, it's it's, you know, it's the Ohio State secondary versus the wide receivers, uh, Dotson and Washington and and some of the other, uh, yeah, some of the other good wide receivers that the Penn State has. But let's let's be frank, most, mostly Dotson. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna kind of go opposite of that, and it's more of a curiosity thing than anything. Is is I think the strength of Penn State is probably its secondary. Um, They've got some really talented guys. They've got some really good safeties, um, Brown and, and Brisker. And, um, I, you know, I really like Joey Porter Jr. at corner. I, yeah. I think he's he he was a – I watched him in high school, and um, we didn't quite know what he was going to be, if he was going to be an offensive guy, defensive guy, but just a, a 6'1", 6'2", kid with a ton of bounce and, and athleticism, and he has turned himself um, into an NFL guy. I mean, he's, he's definitely, he's definitely going to play on Sundays. And so I want to see really not so much for the outcome of the game necessarily, because I don't have too much doubt on that, but right. I, I want to see if, if Ohio state's receivers torch this secondary, 
who is going like that, that continues this question of who is going to stop Ohio state's offense this year, because this will be the best secondary they've faced. And it'll probably be, probably be the best secondary they face all season. I mean, there might be one or two teams that could, they could run into in the playoffs, maybe that right. possible matchups, but um, at least in the regular season, it's going to be the best secondary they face in my opinion. And so if, if the Ohio state receivers dominate this secondary, I, I don't know if there's any hope for any defenses out there. Yeah. It's it, as you stated, it's, it's a, you know, Porter and Brown, uh, Hardy, very, very good def- uh, secondary for Penn State. Um, and yeah, because I've been saying, because, you know, people have started asking, we've we've moved from, will they bench Stroud to, okay, but how good is Stroud? Like, that's how the conversation and sort of, you know, as people start asking like, oh, what's his pro comp? You know, these some of the questions were starting. Yes, I'm paying attention to you, Stuart. The... <laughs> Well, you know, what's the pro comp and, and what's the, you know, is he a Heisman and all of these things. And I'm like, I, I want to see him against a good defense before we start having those conversations and Penn state, despite some of what we've seen from them recently is a talented defense. The, you know, there might be coaching issues and scheme issues, but there's absolutely talent. Yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, to answer a lot of questions, you know, you answer the CJ Stroud question, you answer the, is there any hope for the, for the opposing secondaries at all in the college football this year question? I think, I think you answer, um, you know, again, I, you know, I know they're a little shorthanded up front, but you know, that's a, that's a defensive line that historically has been, been tough to move. Um, and, you know, I know the offensive line is starting to hit its peak as well. And it just, it becomes one of those things where if, if this offense throws up 40, 42 points, I, I think that's a, I think that's a huge statement. Uh, this is not a defense that's been gashed like that, even though we we watched Illinois do some things on the ground last week. Again, it was what, nine overtimes to get to 20 points or whatever. Right. So that, that, that's, that's a defense that, Ten. right, right. Exactly. So that's a defense that, you know, keeps people off the scoreboard. And and so if, if we, we keep hyping this Ohio state offense, if, if this is another 40, 42 point game, it's going to be, it's going to be really tough. I think to, to, to find a team out there that's, that's prepared to, to handle this offense. All right. All right. So, uh, finally the three questions that are kind of all one question, uh, Ohio state, we have at minus 18 and a half, you've thrown some numbers out there. You know, is this going to be a 40 plus point game for Ohio state this week? How many points can Penn state score this week? So, Ohio State, this this line moved a ton. I think it, depending upon what book you are looking at, opened as low as 11 and a half. Uh, by the time we locked a number in, it was uh, 18 and a half. That's a huge move. Um, so with the number at 18 and a half, who do you have? I, and, and just for some context here, I'm generally pretty conservative when it comes to uh, the Ohio state lines. I, I think people, you know, I think, you know, look, we deal with Ohio state fans and we love them, but they, they love to bet the Buckeyes in the over every week. And that's right. why sometimes when people look at the games and they're like, Oh, how's it? Why my three touchdowns? Why is everyone so miserable? Well, <laughs> might've been, might've been some cash on the line, but the line might've been 24. Um, so, but they, in this they've, one, I have a good yeah. streak against the book lately though. Have they not? Yeah, they have. I think that's going to continue. I, look, I, I've got Ohio state covering 18 and a half. I, I, I would lay the 18 and a half. Um, I am not convinced this is going to be close. Yeah, I'm, I, I, uh, I agree. I absolutely, I have Ohio state to win. I have Ohio state to cover. Uh, so with that being said, Mark, do you have a final score prediction? Oh man. I'm thinking somewhere around. 38 let's say 38 to 13 i think maybe penn state gets a touchdown or or one of those two field goals off a turnover um and and but ohio state generally controls the game and penn state generally struggles to move the ball uh i i'm I, may, maybe i have my homer hat on maybe i i don't know but i've been I've been betting Ohio state big. I've been, I've been doing big, big gaps and big numbers. And I feel like when I feel like my 
confident predictions have been better than my less confident predictions so far this year. So I'm, I'm going with it. Uh, I'm going 59, 10. I, I, I don't think, wow. I don't think, Penn wow. State, I don't think Penn state has the answer. I don't, I, I, I don't know who does. I, I think Ohio state's well, offensive let me, let me, line let me is better than their for a sec. defensive let me line. For I don't think they can Wait. cover all of the wide receivers. Then also throw Ruckert in there. Then Henderson. Uh, I, 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 I don't see it. I just, I just don't see it. I think this offensive line is completely dominant. The wide receivers are dominant and CJ Stroud is hitting his stride hard. And then Henderson. If, okay. Let, let, let me, let me just, let's not even get into to all of that. Let's ask this question. If Ohio State wins 59 to 10, yeah. where is James Franklin coaching next year? I don't know. I, I, I'm already if I'm USC and I'm Penn LSU, State. I am slow. I'm Homer Simpson into the bushes. I'm backing away. And if I'm Penn State, I'm I'm now looking at a coach who's, you know, sub 500 in his last 16 games and just got a 50 burger put on him by their you know, the team they need to beat if they want to ever win anything. So where's James Franklin coaching next year if Ohio State wins this game by 49 points? I, 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 I don't know. That's not my problem. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, that's coach Franklin's that problem. Like, I, I, but here, here's my thing. I, not only do I think that Penn State can't, Penn State's defense can't stick with Ohio State's offense, like at all. I, I don't think they can at all. Even if they do, even if the game, even if they start with, you know, even if they like hold Ohio State to seven points in the first quarter, I think that Penn State's offense is going to be so anemic that Ohio State is going to have a ton of opportunities to score. I, Ohio State is going to have the ball a lot. So even if Penn State gets the number of stops that, even optimistically they can get, I think Ohio state's going to have a ton of drives. I think they have a ton of opportunity. I think that there's going to be a bunch of three and outs pitched. Uh, and then we see if the USC and LSUs of the world start running away as fast as they can. <laughs> uh, you know, he, I'm sure he can find some. We just excuses. fire our coach. We're going to hire the guy who's 500 the last two years and just lost by 50 points. I mean, it worked for Bert when he went to Arkansas, right? Yeah, I don't think USC and LSU are, are, are Arkansas. Arkansas. I think we should hold. I think we should hold a US. <laughs> I think we should hold USC and LSU. I mean, what LSU's got three national championships in the I'm last sorry. twenty years. <laughs> who who coached both of those teams at the beginning of the season? How high of a standard are we holding them to? Well, that's that is true. They, th those guys, well, especially Helton, I think held held on a little longer than we thought. Eddie O, you know, caught lightning in a bottle like I've I've never seen before, other than maybe Cam Newton, but. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, let's see. Buckeye Zach is our guest picker this week. He says the Buckeyes won't just cover. They're going to dominate. This will be very solid test for CJ as Penn State's defense will be much more complex and they'll have to overcome, see different schemes and dropouts. I don't see him faltering as the defense continues to get better as well. The Buckeyes come out firing 52 to 14 in the Scarlet out. We're optimistic over in the discord, Mark. We're a very optimistic crew. I mean, that's a lot better than 59, 10, but it's still, I mean, that's, that's still, that's better. still hoses. Yeah. Better Mark. Are we judging? <laughs> <laughs> always. I always judge. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, we actually had an Ask Slukas question from Kyle, which might be the first. I think he wants your opinion on the All Scarlet kit. Yeah, I looked at it briefly. I I don't know. I don't. That's fair. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a little um, came off a little Arizona Cardinals to me. Okay. Am, am I am I crazy on that? It just it was like a little. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't love it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I, I, I'm more like, I like when they do the blackout. I like when they do, I don't know. I the, it just, it, I don't know. I thought I was watching the Arizona Cardinals there for a minute when I 
This whole mock-up. Uh, it's the popular opinion in the Discord server that they um, bring back the old black, the all black helmets to pair with. Oh yeah, that. That then that yeah that would have that would have certainly been better for, in my opinion. I, I I like those those helmets. Those are those are slick. I uh, yeah we we all I think it's it, again once again popular opinion in the Discord. And I'm not just playing up to the audience here either. I I do believe that black is <laughs> black is my favorite color. So fair enough. All right. Uh, some more Ask Sloopcast questions. Um, Austin, one of our oldest fans, uh, he has a recurring theme on the show where he gives us some over-unders for the game. Um, he has Ohio State time of possession over-under exactly 30 minutes. I'm going to go over because I don't think this is a game in which they score on... Penn State... I know I have the score what I have the score at, but I think Penn State's going to make them earn it a little bit more. I don't think there's going to be a lot of four possession touchdown drives. Yeah, I would say over as well. I, I same kind of mindset. I think they are going to run the ball probably a, a little more. I still, you know, God, I don't know why you'd ever run it the way they throw it, but um, yeah, I think they're going to run it a little more. Um, and yeah, I, I think maybe fewer of those, you know, four play 80 yard touchdown drives and maybe more of those nine play 75 yard touchdown drives will kind of, kind of help them. Yeah. And then as I've stated, I think there's gonna be a ton of three and outs pitched by the Ohio state defense this week. So mm -hmm. I like Ohio state on the over with that time of possession, uh, Henderson slash Stroud touchdown total. And he says, uh, uh, he says, uh, if, if it's a Stroud pass to Henderson, that does count to count as two. Uh, over under at five and a half. I think that's a good number because you you sort of think. Yeah, I'm but, gonna go over because I yeah. I think they could the way they're the way they've been going the last couple of weeks I could I could see a double dip I could see a a Henderson swing pass and now you're at two already, right? If you get a Stroud throws a Henderson yeah. swing that counts as two, right? So. I could see that. And, you know, Stroud throws for three or four. Henderson gets maybe two. Stroud throws four. Henderson gets two. Or if Stroud, how, oh, man, gosh. Hold like, on. I'm doing what, some what math. Happened I think if, you're what starting happened, to what, get the, the 59 Stroud here. I think you're, with three. all these touchdowns you're distributing, I think you're starting to get closer to my score now. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> I think you just but I think you just went over your three and one of them's to Henderson. How does that? I don't know. God almighty <laughs> math. I, I, yeah. All right. I'm not uh, sure anyone else is going to score like, well, so Stroud throw. Yeah, no, I'm going to say well, that's a great number. Yeah, he nailed maybe it. I should have taken the under if I'm saying 38. That's that might not be. I might have to take under just out of print. You, you, I might have to take under just out of principle, but yeah, you, I'm you, looking you, at that double dip and I'm like. Oh, You've I got to do some yourself. math. I got some hard math. You caught yourself. <laughs> I haven't done math in years, guys. This is <laughs> ridiculous to make me do math right now. Uh, Ohio State forced turnovers, and he's going to include safeties and blocked kicks in this number at two and a half. Mm -hmm. For all of Penn State's offensive failures, it hasn't necessarily been turnovers. So I think I'm going to go under on this one. That, and again, I don't think they're going to possess the ball all that often, which reduces the likelihood that they'll turn the ball over. I'm going to go under on this one. Yeah, I'm going to go under two. I think veteran quarterback, let's assume he finishes the game. Um, yeah, I'm going to go under. And gosh, even if they... They turn it over twice. I don't know how this game's close, let alone, you know, going over, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. I'll say, I think they'll turn it over once or twice. I don't three. That's with yeah. Clifford. Eh. Yeah. It's I'll say point. no. It's a lot. Sander. Uh, tight end catches. And I'm going to go, he doesn't state, but he, uh, I'm going to go ahead and count Guy in this at, uh, at five and a half. I feel like in a game in which a game in gonna which say under really, I see. I was going to go over because I feel like there's going to be a lot of over the top conservative, maybe shell bend, but don't break defense played by Penn state, which might leave some more room underneath. 
kind of feels like a game in which Rucker catches uh, a few like 10 yard outs. I'm just my my natural position on things with Ohio State and the tight ends is to take the under. <laughs> Fair so enough. that's just my natural disposition on that. Uh, total yards for Ohio State at 485 and a half. See, you want to say over, but then you know. I, I know, I can't. I just, I, I, I can't. I don't think I can say over if they only get 38. We're I did say they turn it over once, though. I said they turn it over and Penn State would get a score off a turnover. The more I'm making you think about it, the more you're starting to like my number versus your number. I'm going to say under. I'm going to I'm going to ballpark them at 450, 460. They'll they'll come close. Okay. Uh, Ohio State sacks at four and a half. Well, what are you saying? You didn't. What are you saying oh, on the yardage? Oh, I'm going are over. You? I'm going over. Oh, okay. I'm all you're in. Gonna, buddy. Well, all I guess in. you, you kind of have to as well. Yeah. I guess it'd be I'm very hard to score in. 59. I'm also pick locked sixes. In. Uh, Ohio State sacks at four and a half. I, I'm going to go over simply because I don't think, I don't know how mobile, I think Clifford is instinctually mobile, but that doesn't seem to be translating to his actual athletic ability post injury. So I think he thinks he can get out of situations that he's not going to be able to get out of. So I think that adds at least a sack or two to what would have already been the total. I think that's a pretty good number. I'm going to go under. I, I think, again, I think three, maybe four, depending how out of hand the game gets. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I Clifford, even limited, fairly mobile. I'm not a huge believer in the Penn State offensive line, but, you know, the Ohio State sack numbers, I, I know they had a great week last week. They've kind of been all over the map. There's been weeks where they – didn't really get after the quarterback. There's been weeks where they got after the quarterback, but didn't really follow through with sacks. And they've had some some explos some explosion games where they've had a bunch. So I'll say under. I'll I'll ballpark it again. I think it was a good number. I'll say three or four sacks. Austin's been giving us these over unders for a few years now. He's very good at setting the number. I, I will give him a ton of credit on that. Um, Penn State first downs at fifteen and a half. I'm going to surprise you on this one and actually go over, only because I think a lot of that's going to come against. You're welcome, Austin. I think a lot of that's going to come against the second team in the second half. I think the, and, and yeah, I just, I think a lot of that comes against the second team in, a, in the second half. Uh, junk, junk, a lot of junk first downs for Penn State. 15 and a half or a quarter. I'm going to say under. I'm going to say under. I Do think we disagree um, on all of these. Yeah, I think Ohio State's going to be in really good shape on the field position battles. And there, you know, again, if I if I'm of the mind that the Penn State's only gonna get to 13 with a with a score that is set up by a turnover or something like that, then um, I, yeah, I don't think they're gonna move the ball very well. I mean, this Ohio State defense has at times let, let some teams run on on them. I don't think this team's set up well to run it on them. Um, I don't think they're gonna be a lot of sustained drives. So I'll go under. All right. Uh, this question's from Gangland. Do you anticipate a lot of pistol sets given the success Illinois had with stretch style runs? Yeah, I, that's a great point. I, I think Ohio State has went more, a little more pistol. I think we've seen more of that type of stuff out of Ohio State the last few weeks. That's kind of yeah. an adjustment they've made um, since, you know, Stroud is a capable runner, but I don't think he's a, he's, a particularly willing. I don't know that he right. loves to run. I think he, I think he wants to throw it. And um, I think they've gotten away a little bit from the, the, the true zone read type of stuff and got into more of the pistol um, to, to better suit uh, his strengths and his, his um, you know, the things he wants to do. So um, yeah, I could definitely see that. I so it's sick of the read option, especially during like the fields era. And then it continued for the first few games of the Stroud era when everyone knew the quarterback wasn't going to keep it. It, it's just, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, and yeah. they, it's a great, it's a great adjustment they made. Um, does Dotson have a subpar game like Freifogel did? Uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to, I'm going to say no. Okay. Um, I think he'll, I think he'll splash once or twice, but, I don't think he's going to blow up like he did last year against Ohio state. 
but I think he'll, I think he'll make a play or two. I, I don't think he'll be a total non-factor. Uh, I, I tend to, I want to say, yes, I do think he's gonna have a subpar game, but I'm just, I want to state for the record. I don't think it's Dotson's fault. I just think no. Clifford's not himself and the offensive line's not very good. And Ohio state should be able to completely scheme around Dotson. Um, Clifford's not, yeah, it just, it's not Dotson's fault, but I don't think he's going to be a factor right. in this game again. And that's not a knock on Dotson. I think he's excellent. It's just, there's too many things working against him. Um, from Buckeye Zach, what defensive schemes will Stroud need to be looking for in order to continue his improvement? Um, any, any, well, there, any weaknesses maybe yeah. you're seeing in, in Stroud's read game or anything along those lines? No, I mean, I haven't seen anything from CJ that would concern me. I just, this is kind of a cop-out answer, but Penn State likes to mix coverage. So I think that's going to be the thing is, right. you know, I don't think you're going to, you're not going to get the same thing every series. You're, Penn State's going to throw some wrinkles at you. You're going to throw some different coverage at you. They're going to, they're going to put Porter out there on an island with guys. They're going to, but then they're going to mix it up with some zone. I mean, so I think that, in itself is going to be the key more than one specific thing he needs to worry about is just that Penn state the will try and confuse him. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think that's, I think that's what he was yeah. leading. I think that's, I think that was the sure. lead of the question for sure. All right. Uh, that's it. That's it for today's show. Uh, we are going super over. Uh, Mark was giving us a lot of great answers. So we're, we're definitely going over on time. Um, I, I think m- we normally do at this point what we call Kyle's corner. It's just sort of a moment for Kyle to give us one little thing at the end of the show. Um, I obviously didn't ask you to prepare anything, so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and and throw a recruiting question at you. That that's your okay. bread and your butter. So for uh, Mark's corner, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you right on the spot. Uh, warning! Oh I'm gonna put you right on the spot. Um, Big recruiting weekend for Ohio State. Give us a name or two. Do you think is, and I'm not, I'm not asking you to call a shot, but who's but maybe the shot. most, <laughs> who has made a couple names. So spread it out a little bit, a couple names who you think could maybe possibly be on commitment watch. Um. I think 2023 linebacker uh, Troy Bowles out of Tampa Jesuit. Um, I think that's a guy who, again, is coming back. Uh, it's Ohio State and everybody else. Uh, there's just not a lot of competition there right now. It doesn't feel like feels like they're way out in front. Um, another 23 guy I'm kind of curious about is Carnell Tate. I know he's moved his decision date around a few times, backed off of him. Um, he's going to be back 2023 20, receiver out of IMG Academy. Um, he's told Alex, he's going to be back for the Michigan state game as well, but he's coming up for Penn state. I could see something going there maybe. And, um, well, I don't know if it's going to be like a one snap. of those has to be his dime. So that's huge. Yeah. Well, they're, yeah, well, they're both, they're both. Oh, okay. They're yeah. both on his dime. Yeah. They would both be. Yeah. So, um, as, as we look in, in 22, I would be watching the offensive line this weekend. They okay. Ernest Green's coming in on his official visit. I think we're going to know, even if it's not a commitment, I think we're going to know a lot about where that one's going by Monday. Okay. Um, and I think if Carson Hinsman shows up, um, it's between Ohio State and Wisconsin right now. He's, he's rumored to be coming back for, for an unofficial. If he shows up, I think that one gets interesting too. All right. I'm just going to go ahead. So there's and a few. Yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and throw a quick thing out there. I'm a uh, St. Clairsville alumni. So I was uh, okay. particularly Very proud of Avery Henry then that uh, we, we finally broke the, uh, the cold spell of getting someone to Ohio state. Um, <laughs> Tim Spencer, I believe would have been the last red devil to, to join the ranks at Ohio state. And that's been a minute that that was 80. That's a small town though, to yeah. have two. And I mean, that's not, you know, I've been to St. Clairsville a lot. It's my, it's my pass through. I'm maybe this is why I'm on the show this week. I grew up in Pennsylvania, grew up about, grew up about 45 minutes West of Philadelphia. So I grew up in Penn state country, but 
going from Columbus to, to Pennsylvania, you go right through St. Clairsville there on yeah. 70 and I've stopped many times in St. Clairsville and I've covered the, the Ferns boys. And yeah. um, yeah. so gotten more familiar with St. Clairsville than you might imagine, but yeah. um, just for that little town to produce those types of guys over the years is, is pretty impressive. Yeah. I, division, I think five at the moment. Um, I think so. I think that's right. Yeah. It, when I was there, we bumped between five and uh, between four and five, but that was before they there were added six divisions at that the time. Seventh division. Probably. So yep. uh, anyway, I'm old. Um, the, <laughs> they, oh, I, Ohio State never offered me, Mark, and I'm still sore about it. Oh, that's okay. I'm, they produce I, football players and podcasters, I guess, right? Yeah. Of course, I'm five eight, and I played on the offensive line, so I don't know what hope i had that sounds about right though for the games i've been to with them <laughs> so you're you're right in that range oh, it, not... it was it was abnormal for ohio state but not st Clairsville. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right uh that's it that is the end of today's show uh i want to encourage everyone to drop by sloopcast uh join our discord server join all of these uh shenanigan filled hooligans down here in our live chat uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus based band. They are called Courtney from work. The name of the song is called do it yourself. The YouTube people, of course, uh, you can click on the link down in the show notes and you can listen to the song that way. Uh, those of you listening on the audio only version, you only have to do nothing. And, uh, you might already be hearing the song right now. So, uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from work. 